Elsa, what do you take out of that when you have such a great start and, and I guess it all turned around? Yeah, well, I think for, for everyone who watched the game, whether it was um, our, our supporters or the general football public, it's just like there's, there's enough evidence there that um, we can play an exciting brand of footy and, um, and restrict a, a pretty good opposition to uh, negate the way that they want to play. So we saw really strong evidence of that in the first first half. Um, yeah, I think it was eight goals to eight goals to three, and we had three three shots at goal in about a, a, a two-minute period there in the middle of the quarter that could have taken it out to you know ten goals to ten goals to three and might have nearly been enough to to really force Fremantle to change and um, but we had a couple of turnovers in the last part of the second quarter that just gave them a couple of easy goals to get them back sort of with um, with a bit of a sniff of getting themselves in the game and and to the credit, their their midfield, which probably lowered their colours in the in the first half, they really got going in the in the third quarter. And um, yeah, that's that's they scored seven goals to one. There's there's the game. So there was evidence that we did enough to suggest that we're on the right track. But you know, obviously disappointed that you get teased, don't you? You think, oh, geez, if we do that for the whole four quarters, we're going to win. Um, but our challenge is just how can, how can we do it for the whole whole four quarters and we just couldn't quite get that done today. So how do you pull apart with them? Do you look at the, what they did when they were dominating the game or do you look at what they did when they were on top? Yeah, well, you, obviously both. And, um, and that's, the, that's the thing in, in games of footy. You know, when when we actually had the ascendancy, we, we wish we could have kicked 10 goals to two instead of, you know, uh, eight goals to five. Um, and when they got the ascendancy in the third quarter they not only scored heavily but they stopped us from scoring so um, it doesn't matter what game of footy you go and play you're unlikely to have full control of the game for the whole four quarters so uh, what we saw today was not um, not unusual in a game of footy where both sides had their had their time and momentum in the game and um, unfortunately they just capitalized on theirs a little bit better than what we did and um, so we'll, we'll, we'll look at both we'll look at you know why uh, why we did so so well at different parts of the game, but also why we why we fell away for a bit in that third quarter, and some of that's just been a young side, you know, experienced. You know, they're guys like I don't know how many games Brayshaw's played, but he'd be up over 100 games now, I'd reckon. And um, you know, Strong's turned into a great little player, and he really got going in the second half. You know, we know Fife, um, you know, Jackson's a Jackson's a good ruckman, so they uh, they got going a bit in the in the third quarter that um, you know switched the momentum fully their way. When your young midfielders were in there in the second quarter and just controlling the stoppages, what does that do for you when you, when you think about what they could become? Yeah, it's, it's exciting for our fans to, to see these guys coming coming through. And um, yeah, we I think all our, the whole footy world and especially the North fans know the journey that we're on. Um, prepared to be um, relatively patient whilst we understand we need to get games and experience, you know, whether the um, youngest team in the competition on our list and uh, the the least experienced. So these games are just, you know, great value for them to just get some 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 sort of validation that wow, when we um, when we put together for a uh, for a period of time, we can win quarters of footy. Um, but it's also validation today that if you don't do it to the level required, that um, an opposition are going to be able to score heavily against you, and that's what happened today. Do you look at something like Bray Shorty and laid a few swells in that second turn, just little basic errors like that? Is that something that you'll address? Um, Bray Shaw in terms of what are you saying there? Smothers and not going back far enough for the mark. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. We on um, on occasions there at the latter half of the second quarter, we just played into Fremantle's hands and. Um, you know, they were, they were able to pop from those plays when we were in control of the game. Um, they were able to pop from those plays and get a couple of easy goals or easy opportunities that, you know, when we've got the footy and we should be going forward, um, you know, you, especially where the ball was on the ground, we're not setting up defensively to just turn the ball over by smacking it straight into the man on the mark. So very, very hard to defend those plays. There isn't a team in the competition that will do that well. Um, so, yeah, just it's, just it's just learning and um, we'll get better as... 
uh, as they get these experiences and sometimes they're just going to go through the hard yards and um, and learn just you know take a couple of extra steps off the mark and give yourself a little bit a bit more time and composure with the ball. And Freo got in front for the first time in the game midway through the third term and it was from that Luke McDonald uh, infringement um, when Luke uh, when Luke Jackson was going for the snap. Um, that's you know a lot of, another little error for you guys. <coughs> but that was that frustrating. It was a bit of a tight call. Big big consequence for it. Yeah, it's. it's um, that's the game. You, I haven't even looked at the tape to see whether it was, um, you know, it was adjudicated from a long way away. Um, haven't even looked at um, whether it was on or off. But, but the bottom line is that the decision was made and it's not going to be changed. So it's just like you just got to move on from it once again. It, if that's a if that's a learning thing for our players, if it's um, if it's um, something that the benefits of moving forward, then we've just got to learn the hard way. Were you surprised there was no score review there at the end um, with that one that went hit the point post on the full? Um, yeah, if, if there's a score review system in there and obviously hit the post, then why doesn't that get reviewed? So that's that's up to the umpires and the um, and the game to adjudicate on that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, where there's where there's confusion like that, where the three umpires come together to say what happened, it's just like, or oh, if no one's sure, it's just like, let's have a look at the screen. <laughs> Um, so I don't know why they didn't do it, but anyway, it doesn't really matter much. I don't think it resulted in um, a change to the game in any, in any way. Or we would have got a shot for goal if they did deem it to hit the, hit the behind post on the full. 19 points it was. Yeah. So, so it wasn't like it couldn't have been a score because it hit the point post, so it was either out of bounds or out of bounds on the full. So do you feel that, that it should be any post should be part of the score review system? Uh, the score, score review, any time there's uncertainty, um, by a goal umpire or a field umpire, a boundary umpire, and whether it's out or in or touched or whatever, I would, I would have said any time there's uncertainty on that, it's just use the score review. Um, so I'm not sure why they didn't, but anyway, it doesn't really matter much. It wasn't the, the issue in the game, really. Yeah, we, we know where we, uh, where we did well in the game, and we know where we need to pull our socks up. Um, so um, good learning for us in six days before we got to tackle the Blues on Good Friday, which I think it's already a sellout, so it'll be a um, great opportunity for our lads against a high quality side in in, in Carlton. Um, must have been pleased with the way some of your key backs stood up today. You only gave away 13 marks inside 50 compared to last week, 25 the most in a game this season. Yeah. So that must have been a positive. Yeah, yeah. We did the, the whole manner in which we defended was a lot stronger than what it was the last, last week against GWS. And, it needed to be. You know, GWS very, very good side, and they'll they'll pull a lot of sides apart this year. Um, they did it at Collingwood in, in the first round of the season, and they did it to us last week. So um, I don't think that's going to come as a surprise to anyone. But we we certainly knew that we needed to you know be a little bit better in that space today, and we did some some encouraging things in that space and took a step forward. But I would still think. Uh, it's an improvement, certainly from 25 down to 13. But we were even dissatisfied that um, the opposition had 13. We'd like to keep them to 10 or less. Um, and if you're doing that, you're, you're winning games of footy more often than not. Any injuries? No, I don't think so. <coughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks very much.